Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Derek Young and Drew Galloway. You get the trio on this Friday, and there's some news out there in the K-State transfer portal world, which I mean, there's been a lot of talk throughout the week recruiting-wise. Drew and I back-to-back days have talked about the football side, one day high school recruiting, the next day what's what's going on in the portal. Today we've got another basketball note with the portal, a couple of different things out there. Probably the first thing to start off and note is we know that K-State – uh, has been interested in Clifford Amore, the Rutgers transfer, and, and certainly a lot of fans have been interested in what's going to happen with him. But still nothing yet on the K-State front of things, but we do know now that Georgetown and Alabama appear to be serious players in this thing. And as we've seen over the last year or two now, anytime Alabama's involved with a, a transfer, you you get a little skittish because Nate Oates and the, the NIL situation down there, they don't seem to be playing around. So what do we make of Omori and where K-State might still fall in this recruitment? Uh, the way that I see it for Clifford Omori, and, and obviously he's a top target of Kansas State, or at least they like him a lot, and have tried to are in the process of trying to get him on campus, is a one, it's probably not the greatest thing to hear two schools first and foremost, and it not be K-State for their chances. Two, at least they were in that collection of 12 schools that he did release at, at one point to Joe Tipton of on three. And you could look at that list and eliminate a good chunk pretty quickly as well, just because of they were going to eventually land someone um, else and kind of they were going to knock off some schools. So I think, I mean, if you to- ask me to like, handicap a top five or a top six for Clifford Amore, I think Kansas State would be included. But I probably am a little nervous about their chances if they can't get them on campus like in between those Georgetown and Alabama visits because I don't know that I would anticipate it getting beyond those two. So I think it's got to be something in between. And if not, that you know, it's fine. And you go on to your next tier of targets. Like, And I know people are panicking and we've seen this a lot when it comes to transfer portal recruiting because it's such a sprint and you kind of lose your mind because you're not getting your first choice or whatever. But, you know, I, I say this a lot and people get annoyed, but like teams like UConn and Duke, they, they, they miss too. You're going, you're not going to get your tier one guy at every single position. And you can make a, a really strong argument that Kansas State got both of their tier one guys at guard and Doug McDaniel and CJ Jones. If you got to go to tier two at a couple other spots, whether it be the stretch four because you missed on Mikhail Brown Jones, or if they tend happen to miss on Clifton Amore, I still don't think it's the, um, you know, end of the line. Like there, there's still plenty out there that I think that they're still working through back channels on that they'll be in on, even if they do miss for someone like that. But yeah, long story short, I tend to think you know, the the latest developments on Clifford Amore don't shine a bright light on the chances for K-State. Well, I'll, I'll ask you this, Drew. Cause so D.Y. talks there about, hey, you did get Doug McDaniel, you did get C.J. Jones, you maybe missed out on Brown Jones from UNC Greensboro. But, you know, that, that one probably fell more in the boat of being one of those Tier 2 type of guys. Doug McDaniel, undoubtedly a Tier 1 type player. In my opinion, I think that K-State, th- this cycle, I think it's important for – obviously the goals of this basketball team next season. And on top of that, just the mental health of the fans for them to to land another guy that can be considered in that tier one category. And I don't think they've done that yet. Um, If K-State isn't able to come through with that, I mean, I know DY is is trying to keep people sane and don't panic here. Like (laughs) everybody misses, but if they don't land another tier one guy, will you have a little bit of concern about what's what K State can ultimately accomplish moving forward? Uh, for me, it would depend on the fit of the entire roster because I think that this roster right now that's cur- currently constructed probably fits a lot better than the one last year. And if you get Arthur Kluma to come back, if you get Brendan Housen, which we'll talk about later, if you get Baba Miller, you get a, a five then I think that you feel a lot better because the roster just feels more complete and feels like, okay, well, you can give a team a look with David Gasson at the five, with another five at the five, with Baba Miller at the five and go a little bit smaller. So you you have a lot of chess pieces that you can really move around. 
you know, I feel like you feel a lot better about the shooting uh, potential of this team if they were to land Housen and they already had Jones and added Doug McDaniel and Day Day Ames really turned a corner shooting the ball uh, during the season. Uh, so I think that you feel a little bit better because the pieces just fit more. And I think that that's more important than the top talent. But yeah, I, I think you kind of bl- you can blend those things. And I think it's almost what they are doing. They're getting top talent tier one guy like Doug McDaniel. They're also getting like high upside, perhaps, you know, NBA potential guys just at, they're still scratching the surface a little bit, but to have that potential in someone like Baba Miller or, even CJ Jones, we've heard too. So I and to Drew's point, the pieces fit a lot better. So you're getting a blend of really good fit, and and I think in general, I think you have more offensive weapons that we just said there. Like yeah. last year, last year you had to rely so much on only one or two or three dudes, and the way that it's kind of if it falls into place the way we're seeing it fall into place, you're going to have five to seven guys that can go get you a bucket. And let's be frank, we, we've kind of, you know, bristled a little bit at the three-point shooting of this team, especially in the past year. I believe Doug McDaniel shot 36% from three. I believe C.J. Jones just shot 38% from three. And Brendan Housen, um, shooting the three is what he does uh, almost exclusively. And I know we're about to talk about him, yeah. but he's uh, on a, he'll begin his visit to Kansas State on Saturday. Well, let, let's let's get into the fit then of, of Brendan Housen because – This team severely lacked shooting last year. That was a pretty apparent thing. He comes in, he's been 40% the last two years at Villanova, almost took five a game this year, and that's pretty much exclusively what he did. I think Drew was saying yesterday that uh, he attempted, what, like 18 two-pointers all season? 16. 16. All right, there you go. I gave him too much credit for that. It's like the Jack Golke guy from Oakland. Just less minutes. <laughs> this this is perfect. I mean, this is what K State has needed, and I think one of the things that should give people some excitement about this is think about K State's offense last year and how everything worked out. Like it wasn't a, a matter of the offense. Uh, I mean, maybe the the pieces you had to run the offense weren't great, so maybe it wasn't the right offense for that. Basically. But but the offense that you were running got open looks. You just didn't have either the guys that could make them or the guys that knew, I can't take this right here. You start to add some of these pieces, it's going to all add up a lot better. And I think that you can find some good looks here in housing. I mean, talking about guys that haven't scratched the surface yet, like CJ Jones, we think that there's another level that he can maybe get to. Miller from Florida State, if K-State was able to get him, I would probably put him in that tier one category because of what we've seen athleticism wise and also the fact that it's just a position of need i think that there's growth that can happen there like there's a lot of things with the miller recruitment that i would view as good here but this is one of those where i think k-state could really utilize a player like this and it would just be a big help to have you know more than one guy that can knock down shots for you and i mean housing comes in he's automatically the best three-point shooter percentage wise that k-state's had and who knows how long yeah, and you're right on Bob Miller too. I think, um, I mean, the NBA really likes him. So, and I think obviously NBA and college are different games, and he'll probably, he might be someone that does ends up more effective in the NBA because it's more conducive to the way he plays. But if he gets into like we're talking about that right fit at Kansas State, where people are luck, well, he's only a 27 or 28 percent career three point shooter. How much can he actually play on the perimeter? you dig into those numbers even a little bit more like specifically, I think someone looked it up. He's almost 40% in corner threes. So shot selection and the way that this floor can be spaced, like Brendan Housen becomes a weapon in that way too. It's not just, Hey, he's knocking those shots down. It's like, well, teams know that he can knock that shot down. He gets a little bit of attention that way and your floor is spaced that much better. So and then if you have him play, for example, next to a Baba Miller, Baba's going to get an open three, which is a better shot selection for him, which is probably why his three-point percentage would dramatically improve in Manhattan. Or he's going to, because of his skill set, have a perfect one-on-one matchup-oriented situation where he can get to the basket relatively easy. Yeah, I, I love Brennan Brendan Housen because I, I love the players that just chuck threes. 
Uh, this is a 4.7 attempts per game in like 17 minutes at Villanova. So he comes in and he is ready to fire. Uh, he has some of the funniest like per 40s and per 100 possessions that I've seen from a, from a shooter. Uh, so his per 40s, he averages 1.1 two-point field goal attempt per 40 minutes and 10.7 three-point attempts. He is not afraid to fire from deep. So it'll be fun to see because K-State hasn't had a guy that can really shoot it like this and make it in a really long time at the guard position. Yeah, the, the, it's it's an exciting thing to think of. And I would also, I, like, K-State's offense might work even better for Housen than what it was at Villanova because here, here are some numbers for you. I was interested in looking at this and, and seeing how it would work out and how it would compare. K-State last year, and a fan talked about this quite a bit during the season, K-State, their percentage of shots and points that came from three were at a certain level, but the actual percentage of which they made them was lower than, than that, obviously. It wasn't ideal for a team that they got the looks, they just couldn't get the makes. K-State last year, 41% of their shots were from three. Villanova last year ended up being 48% of their shots were from three. But if you go in and look at how K-State operated their offense, 57% of K-State's makes last year came off of assists. That's about four to five points higher than what Villanova's assist-to-make ratio was. And to me, that means, okay, you had a guy like Housen here who is obviously much more of a catch-and-shoot type of guy as opposed to create for myself, get the look I want, and make it. That was kind of the offense he was playing in at Villanova. I think if you come to K-State, I mean, 50% of your buckets came on assists last year, and that's on a team that most of them weren't going in if it wasn't like a layup or a dunk, but we know that the looks were there. I think the ceiling for Housen, if he comes to K-State, it's a lot higher than what the numbers show the last two seasons at Villanova. That's another reason why I'm so on board with this if uh, K-State's able to make it happen now that they're getting Housen on, on campus. Yeah, Being a more, catch shoot guy too, with uh, the creators like Doug McDaniel, Dade Ames, and CJ Jones, also makes him and, more valuable. And I mean, if Kaluma comes back, I think the number one thing that, uh, other than maybe making a shot a little bit quicker, I think <laughs> the number one thing for him is number one, uh, attack more. Like we saw him last year, he had those games where when he was attacking, he was. He was being good for K-State. He was being productive. He didn't do it enough. But when you do that, you also then have the ability to kick the ball out. So I think there are a lot of pieces here that add up to making Housen an effective piece if K-State is able to add him. Yeah, to your point, that's absolutely correct on Brendan Housen in the situation. Because for I don't know the I don't know the numbers right in front of me, but a lot of his makes the majority his game is catch and shoot, not necessarily off the bounce. Yep. No, it's it, it'll be interesting to see uh, what it would look like if he came to K State. Because the other thing here too is, I mean, he's a guy that averaged uh, almost 18 minutes a game last year for Villanova. So uh, you would think that that would maybe go up because of the fit that he would have with K-State. So there are a lot of things to kind of dive into there, but that's one of the most notable ones. And this this kind of goes to what we've talked about too. Um, I think Drew and I talked about it with CJ Jones, or maybe it was DY and I, I can't remember now, but we we said you don't you can't have a roster full of the tier one guys. Like that's not going to work out. Like not to the same extent, but look at what happened to USC this year. I think a lot of what happened there was you had a lot of dudes that thought I have to have the ball to make something happen. You need to be able to fill a roster out with A, B, and C players and have them fit together. Housen is a perfect, like, in in the middle there fit guy where you need a player like that to make your team work and and you put it together with the other pieces. I think this is a this is a, a good move for K-State if they're able to make it happen. And I forget what reporter had it, um, so apologies to him if he's watching this and, and is not about to get the credit that he deserves, but technically – Housen, I guess, has a visit scheduled for Nebraska on Monday, which probably is more evidence that this guy is exactly who we're saying because it sounds yeah. like Fred sounds like a Fred Hoiberg offense guy from everything that we've said. Um, in general, though, if you're Kansas State, you want to close it down, make sure he doesn't get to Lincoln. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll uh, see how it goes down. And I that's a that's a good point there because I saw somebody talking about. 
oh, you know, he's he's going to, to Nebraska after I, whatever. I, I mean, the way that K-State has operated, they did it last year m- multiple times in the portal where it's not just other schools that can get guys to come on a visit and then the one after gets canceled. Like, there's a chance that K-State could close this down because, look, if if the, the three of us can come up with reasons why it's the perfect match for housing at K-State, I'm pretty sure Jerome Tang and his staff can do the same thing. And I got two. I, I'll end with two jokes. Uh, the three of us have the same amount of NCAA tournament wins as Nebraska. True. And Jerome, <laughs> Jerome Tang is more in uh, two years as a head coach. It's true, and he didn't even go one of the years. So, <laughs> yeah, you can't you can't argue the math there. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we'll see how it works out. But Brendan Housen, the hottest name to know right now for K State, and uh, certainly some others to keep in mind, but. One that we know will be on campus, and we'll see if the Cats are able to improve this weekend. So that'll do it for the three of us. For more on K-State basketball and football, head over to kstateonline.com. Get set up, get all the recruiting info you need, both high school and transfer portal, and everything else covering the Cats as well. I saw D.Y. had a thing up about Jordan Riley, his guy, uh, maybe his favorite player on the 2024 K-State football team. I don't know. He talks about him a lot, but certainly a player that might make the Cats better on defense in that loaded safety room. So we are out of here. We'll be back with more later on today.